Um, next panel will be Aaron Adwell, Karen Oliver, Kate Caldwell, Carolyn Cremona, Christine Andrea Nelson, I can say the Nelson, Gina Calabrese. They will be followed by the next panel consisting of Babiki Lee, Ariel Goodwin, Godwin, Jesse Mavis, Joni Ashbrook, Caroline Carson, Carl Carlson, Marilyn Hall, Halla, Harla. Halla. Erin Adwell. 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 Go ahead. I'm Erin Adwell of Arlington. I represent myself although my Mima, Charlene Jackson, who ran programs in Hill County, Cause Incorporated in the 70s, would be proud I'm here too. It's my privilege to cast my vote for Wendy Davis, who champions both education and women's rights. I'm a reasonable woman who opposes Senate Bill 1. I oppose Senate Bill 1 primarily because it would require medical abortion, which is the abortion pill, to be carried out in ambulatory surgical centers, which is unnecessary, creates an undue burden on the woman seeking abortion, and will impede access for poor, for poor women living in many of the rural Texas areas. Medical abortions happen early, before nine weeks, because unplanned pregnancies happen to women who are not monitoring their bodies in expectation of pregnancy, they find out later. Many don't find out until six or eight weeks in. That leaves very little time to plan for a very long trip. Planning could include requesting time off work, securing childcare, amassing funds, finding lodging, and locating a facility. Medical abortions are the least invasive, least expensive, and the earliest termination option available. Additionally, I attest that the emotional narratives you hear tonight aren't representative of most of the women who've had an abortion. I sincerely empathize with women who've suffered, and I respect that their suffering has driven them to this cause. However, they represent a very small fraction of women who've terminated a pregnancy. Most of the one in three women who've had or will have an abortion in their lives don't talk about it because it's stigmatized and they're judged. You don't owe anyone an explanation or apology. I'm sorry, they don't owe anyone an explanation or an apology. But in small groups of compassionate women, I hear them, and they say, wow, that was the hardest choice I ever made, but it was the right one for me. Please reject SB1 or exempt medical abortion. Thank you. Thank Karen you. Oliver? Karen Oliver here? Karen Oliver wishes, yeah. wished to provide oral testimony against the bill. I will change that to registering a physician. Kate, she would have been number 300. Are you keeping track? I am so impressed. Hey, Caldwell. Yes. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, thank you, Chair and Committee, for allowing me to testify. My name is Kate Caldwell, and I'm here representing myself speaking against SB1. I'm an Austin native and constituent of Kirk Watson. I believe the only person who should be making the choice of bringing a pregnancy to term should be the one who will live with the consequences. And consequences are tough. The choice may be regretted. It doesn't mean that others should be denied their right to choose. I also believe we should work to reduce the number of abortions in Texas. This legislation will not accomplish that. A study by the Guttmacher Institute compared countries where abortion is, is legal and those where it is not. They found that the abortion rates were relatively the same between them, the main difference being that health risks rose exponentially in countries with banned abortions. Reducing legal access to abortion does not address the underlying issue, unwanted pregnancy. It is irresponsible to close clinics without addressing these circumstances one being a lack of sexual education. Texas ranks fourth in the nation for teen pregnancy, first for repeat, repeat teen pregnancies. Limited access to birth control and family planning materials is another factor. Given the defunding of Planned Parenthood with no alternate provider available, it's clear this has not been a priority in our state. There's a statistic used by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in their efforts to bring family planning to third world nations, stating for every $1 spent on family planning, $6 is saved by the government. If you want to reduce the abortion rate, help people not get pregnant. It doesn't just make common sense, it makes fiscal sense as well. So if we know the actions to take to reduce legal abortions, and this bill includes none of them, what's its purpose? 
I'm inclined to listen to supporters of this bill and believe it's to interfere with the constitutional right of a woman to make her own reproductive decisions, which makes it unconstitutional and in direct opposition to women's health. We have serious problems in this state, many involving the care of existing children. Around 1.2 million children in this state, 22% are uninsured. Teen pregnancy alone costs us over $1 billion annually. We have a childhood food insecurity rate of 27%, nearly 1.9 million children living in Texas experiencing the pain and stress of hunger. We should spend this special session on legislation targeting these issues. There is a real crisis. Thank you. Thank you. Carolyn Chris Cremona. Carolyn Cremona wished to be shown in opposition to the bill. I will, I mean, wish to speak. I will change that to wish to be shown in opposition to the bill. Christine Nelson. Hi. Love the last name. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Chair and Committee. My name is Andrea Nelson, representing myself. I'm a constituent of Senator Watson. I live in Maynard, Texas. I'm here to testify against Senate Bill 1. Self-determination over our own bodies is the concept that makes murder, assault, and rape wrong and intolerable. No one has permission to harm or use your body without your permission. Sometimes we use each other's bodies to survive with organ donations and blood donations, but never without permission. Similarly, a fetus, dependent on the use of someone's body to survive, is there by permission, not by right. When a woman decides to let her body be used to bring a new life into this world, that life is a gift given to the world with love. If consent is denied or withdrawn, the fetus no longer has permission to use that body for survival, much in the same way you may not harvest tissue, organs, or blood from another person without permission, even if they are dead, even if it would save your life, even if it would save multiple lives. A fetus is equal to any other person in this way. Saying that a fetus has a right to use someone's body for survival without consent is tantamount to elevating the rights of a fetus above any living, thinking, breathing person who does not have that right. You are also devaluing women to the status of less than a corpse, that they should be used without permission. That is the bright white line. A fetus begins to earn human status when it can survive on its own without the use of another body, also known as viability. And that is the litmus test to tell if a bill is constitutional or if it is a waste of taxpayer money. Senate Bill 1 is clearly unconstitutional. SB 1 does not protect women's health and has no medical validity. The TMA, the THA, ACOG, you've already heard this, all oppose the bill. SB 1's clear intention is further evidenced by the so-called pro-life movement's fervent support of this bill in hopes that it will be a significant step in their efforts to end legal safe abortion in Texas. Regardless of your personal agreement or disagreement with Roe v. Wade, you cannot justify spending our hard-earned tax dollars on controversial religious activism by voting for an unconstitutional bill intended to challenge an established Supreme Court decision which has been recently upheld. Thank you. Gina Calabrese. Hi. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Um, my name is Gina Calabrese. I'm from Austin. I'm representing myself. Kirk Watson is my senator. Um, I have also um, been a constituent of Don Campbell in the past. Um, thank you for letting me speak today um, in opposition to this bill. As is obvious from the testimony on both sides, the primary intention of this regulation is to reduce the number of women who can receive legal abortions. We have seen these trap laws in other states, and their intention and effect is to make abortions unavailable for as many women as possible. Framing this bill as a measure to protect women's health is sneaky and underhanded, and frankly shows a complete lack of moral integrity. Supporters of this bill could engage the public honesty, honestly in their fight to end abortion, but instead they pretend that they are making medical safety regulations, rush through bills when they think no one is looking, and change the timestamps on official records. They do this because they know the majority of Americans, the majority of Texans, oppose this legislation, oppose legislation of this type. They cannot overturn Roe versus Wade honestly in the daylight, so they are trying to circumvent democracy by lying about the intent and effects of this legislation. But this cowardice and dishonesty has a price. We know from abortion prohibiting countries and from this country, pre Roe versus Wade, that restricting access to abortion does not reduce, reduce the number of abortions. It reduces the number of women who survive abortions. The women who will die seeking abortion in Mexico, in a back alley, or at home with a blunt instrument are the price of this legislation. These women are mostly poor and mostly rural, unable to take time off from work and travel hundreds of miles to states that res respect their constitutional rights. Consider their fate as you reconsider your support for this bill. If you are willing to throw them under the bus, then consider your own fate. Despite your best efforts, you are not fooling anyone by claiming that your goal is to make women safer, and we will remember this at the polls. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak today. Thank you. Thank you to this panel.